these sessions have been great fun over the last few weeks. Uh, I've had some fantastic poets um, give up their time uh, to share some poetry for these sessions, which I'm really, really grateful for. And I know that some people have really enjoyed watching these sessions um, just for that dose of live poetry, even if it's not quite there in the venue on stage, it is a nice dose of live poetry. Um, so, uh, I shall get started. My name is Matt Abbott, I run the spoken word record label Limbs and Fugs, and tonight's Insta session uh, features Camille Poet, uh, aka Camille McCauley. Uh, Camille's great, she, uh, she won the Hidden Voices competition for National Poetry Day, she is a Slam of the North and Derby Poetry Festival Slam champion, and she also recently won the Project Hope Poetry competition as well. Um, I I met Camille working on a project in Sheffield and she's fantastic and I'm really looking forward to seeing what she reads for us tonight. So I shall ask Camille to join. I've forgotten how to do this. It's been a while. See if this works. I'm always terrified by technology. Hopefully we should have a split screen in a sec. Hey. Hey, can you see me? How are you doing? You all right? Well, you've just gone really quiet all of a sudden. That's weird. I'm bad. No. I think it's just my phone. Okay, technical glitches over. Cool. Hey, <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah, not bad, thank you. I'm not bad. How How's Derby life treating you? Well, I moved here like a, about a few weeks before lockdown, so right. Last night was the first time we went out for a meal in into town, so right. But yeah, no, it's all right. I lived here before, um, before I lived in Sheffield a few years ago, um, so I kind of knew what to expect, but. It's cool, isn't it? I like Derby. It's good. So it's not it's not Sheffield, but um it's <laughs> but it's it's good for both of us for work. That was the main reason we moved here and we've got friends here. It's it's a nice city, there's stuff lots of good good poetry stuff going on here actually. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the things I mentioned just then, Derby Poetry Festival, uh, obviously you won the slam there, but that, that looks like a fantastic festival. There's not many places the size of Derby have a festival that good, if that makes sense. Like it yeah, looks definitely. really, really varied program and yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, you won the Project Hope competition most recently. Uh, that how was, was really that? Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I had a poem in mind that I wanted to submit, but it was too long, and it was a poem that I wanted to edit anyway. So it kind of encouraged me to sit down and actually spend some time editing it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it worked out. So <laughs> it's a poem about whiskey and um, well, not just about whiskey, but it's about the theme is whiskey. And I thought it would be a nice idea to start and end the poem with a sip of whiskey. And yeah. it took 12 takes and it was a Monday <laughs> night. <laughs> Love that. I wasn't planning on drinking that Monday, but I was like, I can't do my whiskey poem and not. Not have a drink. Not have a well, it was a really nice touch, to be fair, but I didn't realise it was your 12 take. Were you tempted <laughs> to maybe put a bit of apple juice in towards the end? Like, Oh, I was in the attic room, which is two flights of stairs down to the kitchen. So The more takes you do, the more likely you are to need to do another take. That's the thing, if you're making yeah. the... <laughs> well, but no, it was 12, great. 12 I... <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was a beautiful poem. Um, I, I, I'm not a whiskey drinker at all, but I thought it was fantastic. I loved what it was about, and I loved the way you delivered it. It was, it was really, really cool. Um, so, have you been have you been writing a lot during lockdown? I know some people have written loads, and some people haven't written anything. So, how, how's it been for you? Um, it started off being really, really difficult. Um, I worked for a charity, and we just got so busy. So, I was just doing 12, 13 hour days. I was exhausted, and I just didn't have the brain space or en mental energy to do anything. Yeah. Um, and my head around the whole thing as well is just in itself really difficult. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A couple of things happened. BBC Radio Derby do this like weekly challenge, like creative challenge. And they asked me to write a poem about lockdown. And I was like, that's literally the last thing I want to write about at the moment. <laughs> because, that <was laughs> all I, because at work, all I think about is lockdown and and then constantly checking the news and it's just, just really stressful but I did it and I'm really glad I did it because I ended up getting a poem I really like out of it um and then also we so I'm in this wise talk collective which you know about but um which came apart actually a little plug for Matt we did um a wise talk uh development program in Sheffield a few years ago which is how I met Matt and he basically led a few some workshops for us and sort of get us got us ready to do a longer set 
and out of those workshops we've made a collective just because we get on so well um there's some sort of bond between us so we we meet regular virtually meet regularly anyway um and sabbath we applied to go to perform at the saboteur awards yeah and um obviously that had to go all online and for some reason in the backs of our heads we're like oh we've got aid well, it's not we'll have to do like i don't know we'll get delayed or something and then about a month, well, however long, a few weeks beforehand, they're like, oh, so we're going to go digitally. Are you ready? We're just like, ah, OK. <laughs> and all of us are working like full time jobs as well. So it's like, OK, let's yeah. so we forced ourselves to sit down and really like, we had some con obviously had some content because we've been working on it for a while. But um, it really forced us to sit, not sit down. We'd meet every Sunday morning and give ourselves homework for the week. And that really forced me to sit down and write. And then from then I start, did, I've written a lot more. So. Nice. Yeah, so, nice. Yes and no. <laughs> yeah, there's a recurring theme here, which is like if there's a deadline, yeah, you'll produce I, I can't, really good work. I work a lot better to a deadline. I need a deadline, otherwise it just nothing ever happens. <laughs> I know, same. I, I honestly don't know how people write poems without deadlines now. I'm so far beyond being able to just write a poem for shits and giggles. Um, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. I find myself deadlines. Like I um, applied to the Verve Poetry F Press um, pamphlet deadline. Um, that oh, yeah. was that was 20th of July or June, I think. Of the, um, but I, I had poems that was kind of had lots of themes together, but there were lots of gaps missing. So, right. so and I've always wanted to sort of bulk it out a bit, and I've wanted to put together a pamphlet for ages. But this, again, I saw that deadline. It's a great press. Obviously, you're um, published with them as well. Um, so I thought, why not give it a go? Um, it, was, it was rejected in the end, but I'm really glad that I, I spent a lot of time sitting down and working with it and sent it off to an editor to get it and came back and then worked, made a little reworks. And, yeah. But yeah, so now I've got more poems than I did ha ever have before because I forced myself to sit down and apply to this. Yeah, poem. just the process of saying, okay, what gaps need filling, which poems maybe need this, or which poems might link, just like seeing it as a pamphlet or as a collection rather than just, I guess that's, it's just a different way of thinking, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Hi, Shell. That's my sister that's just logged in. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, before, so I started off in very much, a lot, a lot of well, just spoken word, really. I never thought about a poem's title or anything, what it looked like on the page, or anything like that. Um, and uh, starting to get, well, lockdown has made me think a lot more seriously. I started to think a bit more seriously about what my poems look like on the page a bit more, but lockdown, yeah. especially this pamphlet, has really made me think about it. And I've found it really difficult to perform online. So having this time to spend and sit and write and edit instead has actually been really helpful. Not that I've enjoyed lockdown in the slightest, but... No, but, you, but obviously every cloud and all that. Yeah, of course. No, I get what you mean. Like, um, and much, I, I love doing these intersessions with people because just because I'm hoping it's very chilled and relaxed and that. But I realise online gigs are weird. So, so yeah, it's it's good to use the opportunity to do other stuff. And like you say, as a writer, like having this time to like maybe spend more time reading or looking at the page or whatever, it's sort of invaluable, really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. I guess. Cool. Well, uh, do you fancy sharing a, a poem or two? Um, shall I do the one I won the hope thing on? Yeah, Let's cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is... Uh, so another thing that's gone out the window in lockdown is memorising poems, so I'm going to have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, whiskey Relief. I want nothing less than your heart poured out across the table at 3am in a bar soaked in beer. Let the whiskey ease the tongue. I need to see how you struggle in daily life. This world forces a silence in our throats, prevents us from being honest. Roll the truth around the edges of lips like it's the ice melting on the rim of your glass. Taste the relief it gives as honey and vanilla soak oak wood. I read that wine should be stored horizontally, but whiskey stands upright and proud and you are whiskey. Heat free, high ABV, vintage cask, a humble, sweet, bayside brave heart. I'm the soggy bar mat soaking up all the stickiness. I do not ring myself out anywhere near enough because I know how hard it is. So 
I'll do my best to open up in the times that you can't. Hoping, if I do it for you, you do it for someone else and they for another until the whole world is distilled. But until then, I'll wait patiently at the end of the bar with my credit card, ready to buy the biggest bottle of the best single malt. Because don't we deserve the top shelf every time? Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Love that. That's great. Like, I, but I, I love the line you said about wine lying down, but whiskey standing up. Like, I just thought it was brilliant. Oh, so cheers. good. <laughs> cool. Um, so what is that? Was that relatively new or was that, is that the point you meant where you had a draft and you had to edit it down for the competition or? Uh, yeah, I met, I met, uh, I wrote it. Prob it's probably one of my earliest poems that I wrote, but it was prob nearly about three minutes long. So that's probably, well, it was about just over a minute. So it's yeah. down like quite a lot but um I, I memorized it and I really enjoyed the previous poem at the time and uh, it was one of the poems that <clears throat> whenever people uh, whenever you no, know, at the end of the night or after you perform people come up to you whiskey that whiskey poem was usually the one that people mentioned and how they liked it right. so it was in my head I wanted to edit it but I found it I didn't know how but it just got stuck with it in that version for so long and I was like fine yeah. I'll just just leave it um, then I left it for ages and then came back to it and for this hope competition and it's yeah I think it's a lot stronger than it was before and I'm a lot happier with it so all your darlings and all that yeah definitely there was a lot of that quite a few stanzas got chucked out <laughs> it's tough in it but I think I think personally I think that's the most important thing to learn like whenever I look at my early stuff it's always just too long or too waffly and yeah. like learning to cut it down like not that the original, like, the, just, you can only think about when you look at your own cart, you're like, it's really weird, but, but yeah, no, I, I, I think it's beautiful, that poem, really cool. Yeah, I, and I obviously, got, uh, it won. Pardon? And it won as well, so. It won, yeah. Oh, I've got this £100 book voucher as a prize, and it's amazing, I was so happy to win it. Um, so, Sonia, who I think came second or third? Yeah. Um, in the second. competition, she got £25 gift voucher, and there's a bookshop in Matlock called Scarvin Books that take the voucher so we've made a date for about a week week or two's time we're going to go and get, do some book browsing and spend them but, um, nice. browsing for books online because I'm trying to avoid going to shops as much as possible um I've been a yeah. bit more lax now but um yeah it's just really hard it's not the same browsing books online like, I don't mind I don't mind doing most shopping online because I hate shopping but Book shopping is the one thing that I really enjoy doing. So yeah, I know what you mean. Just picking something up and just reading the blurb on the back, even if you'd never heard of it before, and being like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> cool. Um, I really love that uh, the Berlin uh, it's like a subway poem. Like, um, I don't know if it's subway is the right that. word, but I looked at that in a long time. <laughs> I love. I, I remember. Um, I remember you reading that poem in the the Wise Talk workshops, and that was great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I can't even remember where that is. I'll have to dig that out, actually. Inspired me to get it out again. <laughs> yeah, that was great, that. Um, cool, do you fancy uh, reading another one? Yeah, all right. Uh, what shall I do? This is what Wait. I like about online gigs as well. You just have a bit more freedom, don't you? To sort of, like, drop poems yeah. in and, like, yeah, yeah. It's much, yeah, it's much nicer. And it's actually having yeah. a conversation as well, rather than just sort of staring at a screen and... It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I realise it's weird that you're essentially just performing to me, but like obviously people are watching. But yeah, it's sort of just such a different. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Let's do this one. Okay. I'm just gonna go straight into it. Christmas work party. Boss too close for comfort. Hanging vulture, hoping the vulnerable will lose their way. Mince pies, carpet crumbs underfoot. Fairy lights flickering, unwanted wine lips on un unwanted wine lips on wanted goodbyes. I escape to Yorkshire, try to fathom endearing terms like love and duck, and with genuine compassion, I know you or not. Where I'm from, bird is an insult. Translates to piece of meat. I find life in studying. 8 a.m., waiting for a taxi to campus, wait, mumbling half-formed sentences. 
Suddenly, a man cycles past, strong as an eagle, wingspan shadows the road. Peering over shoulder, he looks me dead in the eyes and says, ooh, I fuck you. I get dressed for work, sun creeping into curtains, ready for a day making beds. I walk down the high street, sweepers clear the night's remains. Builders leer over scaffolding, crows lined up on rooftops, silhouettes in the sunrise, squawking walk of shame. Packed pub of mates, only drunken remain. Ashtrays filled to brim, empties cover tabletops, palms hug pints to hearts. Suddenly, a hand grabs my ass. Heavy-handed, I own ye kind. I turn to a mouthful of peacock feathers. He asks to wear my hat. I say he has taken enough. You have all taken too much. He shrinks into himself. Shriveled, raisin body. The I peel wings of predators. Take the name bird. And fly with it. Wow, beautiful. I love that. The word, yeah, the word bird, like, yeah, it's because it sort of is meant affectionately sometimes, and then other times it's really grim, isn't it? Like, it's, it like, depends I, I think it's like that a lot. And everything, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's weird, like, because I've been watching Confession, I've been watching Towie a lot recently, and they're always like, my bird, your bird, whatever. And up north, <laughs> it's saying, like, our lass. And, like, yeah. obviously, I realise that our lass is potentially problematic in some ways, but it's very much meant affectionately. Like, your bird sounds a bit more yeah, possessive. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. But that, that, was, that was beautiful. And the, the row of crows uh, squawking uh, Walk of Shame and stuff, like, just all the images. Yeah. And I, oh, fantastic. When I was at uni, in Ch I was went to uh, uni in Cheltenham, studied photojournalism, and I lived on the high street, and I was getting ready for work. Like, I was doing... I worked in... At hotel, so sometimes I do night shifts. Sometimes I get up early and sort the beds out and stuff. I was literally got up, walked out onto the high street, scaffolding above a pub, and walked down. And then some guys shouting about me about the um, whatever it was, that late night or whatever. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm in a like white shirt and like, I'm going to work. <laughs> it was a female. Whatever, just ridiculous. But. I know. It's grim, but uh, that was beautiful. And like I said, the way that you used that, took that word and like reinterpreted the imagery and stuff, it was stunning. Cool, nice one. Um, believe it or not, it's a uh, quarter to us, so we're halfway through. Um, do you fancy giving us another one? All right, uh, let's go for a more nicey one. Okay, let's go this one. Okay, so me and my boyfriend, um, he worked overseas for a couple of years. And it was really, obviously, if anyone's been in a long distance relationship before, you know how really difficult it is. It's horrible. Um, but yeah, he came, he's obviously back now and we live together. But when he first got back, one of the, one of the hardest things was learning how to share a double bed again. <laughs> so there's a poem <laughs> about that. It's called Mattresses. We sold our tramlines tickets for a mattress and a night in Scarborough. We struggled to sleep in the same bed, lack of space. We stayed in the spare for weeks. Sleep was more important than dreaming together. Conversation barked like stray dogs fighting over rotten bones. Plants wilted, routines lost, forgetting how important it is for skin to touch to start and end days together, share dreams under the same stars. Huffing the exhaustion away, you drag the spare mattress upstairs, take apart our bed frame and put two doubles side by side on the floor. Now there's a heat wave. The attic is too hot to sleep in, but we share a mega bed with a skylight. That's it. <laughs> nice. That when must we, have been well we... like learning to like live together again and sort of, yeah. Yeah, well, we didn't live together before, so um, oh, we've been right. friends for about 20 odd years. Um, we've been together for about five, so we knew each other really well and everything, but um, 
yeah, the money got like, spending two years apart, and then we came back and we moved in together. Um, so obviously a big change, but the mega bed really mm. helped. I highly recommend putting two double mattresses side by side together because it is the best. best that sounds in the world. pretty good. <laughs> but when that we moved to Derby, good. when we moved to Derby, part of the house hunting and looking around houses and checking out bedroom sizes was to make sure we could fit these two beds next to each other because. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's now necessity. <laughs> he said it once, I thought when he, Mikey recommended getting the, the mega bed, um, and I thought he was joking. And then after a little while of thinking about it, I was like, well, it just makes sense, doesn't it? So, yeah, we have a yeah. mega bed now. Two right. Yeah. Cool. I love that. That was beautiful. Um, so, I've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, I'm more than happy for you to do whatever you want, but I'm just thought I'd let you know in case there's a couple you definitely want to share or, or whatever. Um, I don't want to be a taskmaster. I'm just giving you an indication. Um, um, I've got another one, actually. Um, so, that mattresses poem, it was merged together with this next poem that I'm going to do. Um, but then I sort of realised that there are actually two poems instead of one. So, so this is so a So, it wasn't a mega poem? It, yeah, no, it, I thought it was, and it didn't work. I tried. <laughs> but, um, so this one's called Sunflower and Chili Seeds. Your treat for the month was to buy a Wilco's greenhouse, starting by filling the propagator with chili seeds. Pride of place on bedroom windowsill, best spot for sunlight. When they grew, you smiled, surprised life could be as simple. We repotted them on the dining room table, shoveling compost haphazardly. You charged me the care of sunflowers, despite my plant killer reputation. A mad professor refilled the propagator, more and more chili seeds, delirious on the idea that food is love. To give to friends as presents, for Fred and Shirley next door to fill our fridge with batches of curry sauce. We collected used, used jars to make it in. For weeks, the cupboards were filled with empty vessels of ambition. The greenhouse consumed the garden, plastic patio cave, where there is time to, where there is space to grow, and time to photosynthesize. Seeds will sow the future. Bit of a cheesy one. There it is. Nice. No, that's beautiful. I love that. I love the, the tiny pots of ambition in the fridge and the way no, it's, that's really nice. You don't need to apologise for being cheer cheesy. That's lovely, that. I've only got a couple Probably. of those. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be cheese to be nice every now and again in it. Like, no, that was great. That I love that. Dan Sumption, yeah. Dan Sumption loved it as well. Andy and Winter. Yeah. So it's all good. Thank you. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for listening, everyone. Really nice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I've, I've, loved, I've loved what you've shared. Pardon? Sorry? Oh, Vicky loved it as well. Vic loved it as well. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've loved what you've shared. I think you've been brilliant. I've loved your performance. It's been great. Like, um, yeah, if you've yeah, got anything else you want to share, you're more than welcome to. But if you just want to chat, it's entirely up to you. I planted some chili Somewhere. seeds in a pot this spring and they've grown up into a sunflower. Ah, that's impressive. <laughs> that is really impressive. Well done, Dan. Um, all right, I'll read another poem. Why not? I'm just going to have a sip of wine first, though. So. Aye. Ah. Um, okay, this one is One for the Wombs. Wombs are the bus that arrives early, or a tap on full flow leaking through floorboards. Wombs are mastering the art of stuffing enough tampons into the inside zip pocket. Subtly picking up handbag on trips to the toilet, hiding shame under arm as well as between legs. Wombs are grinding teeth together, biting crisps into gums, a wrench into gut. Pain that prevents standing straight, draws of headaches, excuses for ibuprofen. Wombs are screaming into a pillow, a, kett a kettle about to boil, an unanswerable why? Wombs are robots in the apocalypse, hardwired machines with one purpose. Wombs are force-fed dictionaries, mouthfuls of mother and maternal. 
Whims are birthdays any parents remember. A party without the host. Salt in the cake. Wombs learn to carry broken body in neon sign, attracting unwanted pity like flies. Wombs are an army, a bond built with resilience, a quiet nod in passing, linking fingers with strangers. A womb is a balloon, an inflating organ where kidneys and intestines shift up to the heart in respect. Wombs are the force of a train at full speed, splintering ribs on electric lines. Wombs are nectar and seeds, sucking on sunshine from the start. Hey. Wow, that was incredible. That was really great. When did you write that? Uh, again, that was probably about a year ago. And again, wasn't happy with it. And but since lockdown, I've edited it quite a lot. So, yeah, wow. actually, yeah, cool. I've managed to save a bit of money from doing some poetry freelancing. And any, because I've got a full time job, I'm lucky enough that any money that I get out of poetry, I try and put back into poetry. Yeah. So I had, um, so yeah, I had this money, and I've ended up spending it on getting some editing advice. So I sent some off to. Leanne Moden, she gave me loads of really useful advice. And I sent oh, some yeah. off to like the pamphlet content to Bridget Hart of Burning Eye. Oh, of course, and yeah. They, they sent me loads of really useful tips. So yeah, that's so my poem that's why I don't know anything anymore either. I don't remember I used to memorize them all. Um so I find it hard when I'm reading off the screen to not flip back to the old version. <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you need to worry about memorising it. That's the thing. Like, too many people put too much importance on it. Like, it's what it, the poem's what matters in it, really. Like, oh, no, I agree. Yeah, definitely. It's just, I think maybe more in person, um, at least anyway, when I'm on the stage, I, I feel more comfortable when I've memorised it because I feel like I can spend yeah. more time with the audience and enjoying it. But at the moment, yeah. the audience is a little emoji. So, sorry, people. Yeah. <laughs> well, from what I've seen, like, Vic and, and Lou and, and Selena and Dan and Ian, and, like, people have really loved it. So, thank you so much for giving up your time and sharing your work in yeah, this strange um, format. I know I said I didn't enjoy performing online, but stuff like this is so good. I really, this is much nicer. So oh, cool. I've watched a, a few you. of your, um, these sessions, and they're just really interesting what people have got to say, and it's really nice. Yeah, I'm lucky that so many people like you agreed to do it. So thank you very much. Um, hopefully I'll see you in Derby or Sheffield or somewhere soon. But Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> That'd be nice. Cool. But yeah, take care. <laughs> later. Take care. Bye. Uh, that was Camille McCauley, also known as Camille. Please check her out on here and on Facebook. I think she's absolutely wonderful. And also the Wise Talk Collective that she runs as well. They've, they've done some great projects. Um, and they did a really beautiful piece for the Saboteur Awards earlier this year. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks everyone for the lovely comments. My name is Matt Abbott. We are Nims and Fugs. I will be back next week, same time, 7.30 to 8pm UK time with another Insta session. Um, take care. Cheers. See you later.